let's let's talk a little bit about the the um, the Bogolis period, which is ten thousand BCE to seven seven thousand five hundred BCE. Okay. Okay. So this period is quite interesting. It's actually one of my favorite uh, periods because of how the stones, how the the petroglyphs look. Like it has a, a very naturalistic, really textured type of look because the people at the time they they carved the stones very deep so over time because these again these these stones are found in the sahara over mm -hmm. time the sand hitting the stones sun rain it smoothens out the the stone face but it's so deep so it gives this really interesting oh, almost look. like the stone was like born that way exactly like it's oh. like 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 they carved it like butter or something like the <gasps> stone was liquid and they just went right through it so oh, it's gorgeous so it, it's great it's what kind great. of forms were they carving so in this period um they actually managed to depict animals life size so they would find massive stone faces in and like literally try to go um, one to one with the size of a giraffe, a hippo. Oh my gosh! An elephant. Yeah. So these these petroglyphs are huge in this in this period. And they look um, all soft like that. And they look all soft like that. Yeah. Wow. So it's quite fascinating stuff. Yeah. I would say that the humans, whenever they were depicted, they were actually the um, dwarfed by the size of the animals. So the the people, in proportion to the size of an animal, was still very small. So it seemed that they were sort of putting the animals up on a pedestal or like maybe that like hierarchical yes scale representation yes maybe worshiping them or something you know yeah. at least it seemed that way because when we look at the egyptian art we see that um that motif which is where the gods are always exalted very large they look like giants compared to everybody else and it showed their hierarchy it showed where they yeah. were place of where they were Right. It seems to be like a really like well established convention because we see it in Mesopotamia too. So maybe it started all the way back yeah. in the petroglyphs. Yeah, yeah. For some reason, I thought the Mesopotamians had started it, but no, we see examples of it in the what Babalu period. Yes, Sorry, yes. I'm not saying that right. Yeah, uh, yes. This is the Bobulus Bobulus period. Bobulus period. Bobulus period, and uh, yeah, this is found in Algeria, um, in the Sahara. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, so the Sahara has a lot of rich rock art. Um, some of the, the world's richest, as a matter of fact, and most plentiful. You can go there and so now beautiful. and still see it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So there's also, what's interesting, there's also a lot of depictions of elephants, crocodiles, hippos, and giraffes. This, this is what you saw the most. And of course, there were these bovine creatures, um, which are cows. Yeah. But they had massive horns. Um, I was trying to look into that a little bit, and um, it seemed that that particular species of cow has gone extinct. It has huge horns, like I mean, like like nine feet. Going oh my god! Out. Yeah, yeah, each horn nine feet out. Yeah. So I thought when I when I encountered the works, I thought it was just an exaggeration, but really it seemed that they like were. this is an animal that they were interacting with. Yes, this and was probably an animal. along with like massive animals like elephants and giraffes. They had like, rever like reverence, I guess you could say. Possibly, yeah. Well, I guess we'll never really know. I know. <laughs> but so like, whenever things. you're you're driven to like make a depiction of something, you mm -hmm. know, it comes out of somewhere. I know, I know. It's it's wild. It's a fascinating thing to think about what these people believed at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, they had no, no nothing, just nature. And like, imagine, so you're like carving so deeply into the rock. Like, we don't yes. see, it's not common that we see it so deep. Yes. So these carvings, like, imagine doing that. Like, these people were so committed. Like, this yes. image is staying in this rock forever. Abs absolutely, right? And, and it it's taking so much effort. Right. Like, and mm -hmm. it makes you wonder what was their intention why did they want to do it in that particular way um so from this time period here in um in the tesla integer uh that's that's in the sahara in algeria this is a petroglyph that shows a large buffalo with um long horns and again we see these swirling patterns that somehow has maybe some symbolic meaning because the, the patterns tend to either be 
interconnected as two parts that swirl and connect, or it's just by itself. And it's usually found in and around the animal. Right. Um, so it's quite interesting um, to speculate what this might mean. I mean, I, I did, in like some of my research, they were talking about how some abstract patterns around animals can represent like hunting magic. Like nets, they would like sometimes try to depict what we think might be nets mm -hmm. or um, some way of like projecting into the future. Like this is how I want this hunt to go. But wow. the swirls, like I have no idea. And yes. also when we look at the images from this period that you just shown, it seems like they really tried hard to make them like fairly anatomically correct. Yes. Um, like they're quite detailed. Absolutely. So, I mean, the scale of the horns. I guess this is just a, this is an extinct animal. It's not like they yeah. were over exaggerating the horns. They were probably putting the same detail and care that they put into the other animals. Absolutely.